Hello everyone. So please take a seat, uh, grab a coffee, close the door. Hey, do, do you hear me? Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's uh, it's a pre-recorded session, so I can't hear you at the moment. As you was listening to this record, I'll be in holiday in the south of France in my swimming costume. So give me a question in the chat room. I'll be pleased to answer you at the same time. So hello, everybody. I'm Nicolas. Uh, just a few words to present myself. I'm an independent uh, penetration tester, a security editor. I work uh, for a decade in this uh, cybersecurity industry. Uh, now I've built my own company and I work in the internal red team of a financial institution in France. So as you see and heard, I'm French, so sorry for my French. Thank you. We'll talk about Automating security operation, SecOps. What does SecOps mean to, to you and to me today? Uh, everyone has his own definition. For me, security operations could be related to a bunch of activities. For now, please consider at least these activities. I will talk about penetration testing, security control assessment, vulnerability management, CTI, and DFI operations. Uh, security compliance and uh, uh, all about uh, code review and uh, web application testing. We will see why and how to add automation within this activity. Um, we'll, we'll talk about Patrol. Uh, Patrol is an open source framework for automating and orchestrating tasks as we've seen security, uh, security operations. It provides a solution to get a continuous and full stack overview of your cyber exposure. The solutions, the, the solution, sorry, lets you to define your assets, your scans policy, and the scan you want to, to perform. The scans give you findings, and all these findings are then collected, analyzed, and aggregated within a unique database. database. We develop several engines and connectors to existing security tools uh, to assess risk on various security domains. The idea is to get a risk overview from IP to data level. The scans could be start one shot, scheduled on, uh, started on a regular basis. And the final goal is to get a continuous monitoring of our assets and our security posture on all stacks. All the findings. The findings could be a confirmed vulnerability, a suspicious change in our systems, or a suspicious activity over the internet. Uh, these findings are then contextualized and tracked over the scans. And that's all for me. Now, oh, of course, it's not a tool presentation. No, it's, uh, I just want to, to tell you about uh, security uh, operation and about automating SecOps. As I told before, I work in a CSIRT uh, since uh, five years. And from my windows, there are two major factors that, have, that lead current evolution of the IT landscape. This that are acceleration and diversification. This applies to assets, the threats, and by the way, the security incidents uh, involved. We see an acceleration of digital program and diversification of assets. So thanks to the uh, digital transformation program, uh, we see an explosion of IT projects. The information systems are more and more open to the world and then more and more open to hostilities. We have to deal with new technologies everywhere, every day. A new product, new framework, new library, in, and all these technologies are updated every day. We also see changes in the software delivery processes. Remember a few a few years ago, when it was about four to five months of production per year. Today, thanks to the hype of uh, DevOps activities, we can see multiple go live in uh, in a day. And um, a go live means a new uh, new application, and um, by the way, new vulnerabilities or a new uh, new expose expose things. The threats are growing too. 
uh, the number of CV is growing year after year. It's it's a metric. It, I don't I don't know. It's a good metric to uh, to talk about the number of CV, but it quite be representative. Um, about the the attackers, they they do a great job. They are more and more, and they are more and more organized and efficient. From a defensive point of view, we have to cover a quickly changing IT landscape. And at the end of the day, it's increasingly hard to get a realistic, comprehensive, and sufficiently updated vision of our cyber risk exposition. We also have to face uh, another problem. It's the talent shortage problem. We have not enough people to do the job uh, at, at the moment. Lots of tasks are repetitive, and this led people to lose their motivation and leave the team. We definitely be, believe it's time to, to adapt our uh, cyber defense paradigm, and uh, we have to adapt the way we, we do our job and we, we monitor our uh, cyber security posture. To face these challenges uh, in the, the, the team, we try to manage security incidents with two goals. The first one is for the red team. It's about identify vulnerability, vulnerabilities on our assets before attacker two. And for the blue team, it's to identify indicators of compromissions, which could be past, current, or future of a, a potential security incidents. And to do this, we have to, to keep us updated from many, many things. The first one is to, be, to keep us updated from the, the continuous transformation of our assets. It could be more or less considered as shadow IT in big companies. We have to, to keep us updated from the InfoSec knowledge database, uh, the new research publications, the, the talks talking about the new, uh, new vulnerability or a new way to detect certain things or to exploit the vulnerability and hold the security news and the spectrum of threat scenario is changing also every day we have to manage lots of feeds of information to every day and um, finally it, we we found that scanning our sets is not efficient anymore we have to monitor external resources to detect leaks attack signals and uh, and to understand how third party see our security posture. And, and for day-to-day -day work, it could be very hard to manage all of this, uh, this information. In the cyber security uh, industry, it's, uh, it's a race against the clock. Another aspect we, we have to tackle is the window of exposure problem. It's all about our reactivity. Today, we know that attacker will attack us, not just because we have a bank, we are, we are a gas industry, we are, we are something fancy. No, it's just because we are on the internet and new vulnerabilities are found everywhere. It's just increasing the likelihood of attack scenarios. So the windows of exposure is a real problem and could be handled in the, with, with priority. We said that we have to detect and fix the vulnerability and suspicious activities as soon as possible. So facing the, the, the challenges, we, we, we think about automation and orchestration. Uh, just a quick reminder, my definitions of automation, it's setting up a single, step, a single task to run and orchestration, it's about automating a lot of things at once. It's about coordination and management of uh, automated tests. Before we go, let's share our personal experience. A few months ago, I set up a Kubernetes cluster with default configuration exposed to the internet. It was unfiltered. Maybe you see what uh, what will be the, the next thing. Only 24 hours after, I was hacked. A practice miner was deployed on my cluster and my server starts to, to mine uh, some cryptocurrencies. After from a quicker forensics, 
forensic and I definitely think I was not targeted because I was uh, near Nicholas. Just because probably um, a scanner identified that a non-secure service was exposed on the on the public IP and the attacker automatically deployed his payload on my server. So I don't blame him. I don't blame him. It is doing his job. He's doing a great job for for this point of view. The fact we have to remember today, it's not that I'm um, chip DevOps, no. We have to accept that attackers do automation and better than us in their field. Why automating uh, SecOps? The first thing is for a defensive point of view is to do more checks, to cover a larger and diversified scope, but to cover bigger perimeter of assets and make more control on each stack. And the second thing is to, to do it more often. To, uh, it could be uh, a continuous checks, could be very useful to reduce the windows of the exposure, to reduce the delay in discovering and fixing a, uh, a security incident. The third, uh, the third thing I, I would like to say, it's about efficiency. Uh, as I told before, we have to face a big problem, a, the talent shortage problem. Uh, the idea is to reduce the time affected to uh, to low uh, to low value adding the task, to focus among complex security cases, and for doing um, for doing this, we have to automate the the simple the, the, the simple task. It's also a way to reduce and manage cost and to start follow KPIs. It could be also very useful to to help you to help you in your compliance and benchmark activities to define and expedite the same control on on a subset of uh, of assets and uh, and do it um, continuously to see the the trends and uh, how far you are compliant with your security standards. So at this time of this presentation, you should be all convinced of uh, automation. So there are several downsides we have to discuss now. Of course, there are, there are limits. It doesn't cover all of the risk in, in itself. It's uh, if you automate uh, the, your, your control, you, you will have an increasing number of alerts to, to manage, an increasing number of false positive. Uh, we, we, we found also that it's very use, it's very useless, inefficient uh, to found functional vulnerabilities. We also have to qualify and contextualize all the findings we, we have uh, we, we, we have found. And about the, the TCO, yes, uh, automating we, we don't Automate things by magic. Uh, we we use tool that orchestrate all the tool. So we have also to manage and exploit the the the, the, the tools. Um, at the end of the day, a tool is a tool, and it's very useless without a cyber defense strategy. So if you don't have a strategy, don't try to automate things. By the way, we, we, we decide to build the uh, patrol for automating and orchestrating the SecOps because we wanted to improve our level of uh, maturity and to become more efficient to, to adapt our work. The core concept is the, to efficiently moving from a reactive to a predictive more or less predictive uh, security posture with the, the benefits uh, from the, the the power of uh, automation and also we, we decide to, to use to, to don't develop our tools but to to use in priority the best of great tools the great tools exist but they are not addressing all the stacks at the same level and not that issues of uh, qualities are very efficient to scale for for vulnerabilities, for misconfiguration on infrastructure and your cloud uh, your cloud uh, services. But there were applications, scanners, 
and the confidence security assessment and the anti-malware modules are not sufficient enough. We, we found that they, they, we can have only one tool to to uh, to cover all the all the the, the security the control we we have to to, to assess. And we we found that uh, that we have to to support scan uh, scans policy which are realistic from an uh, attacker point of view. And and the, the, the idea was to uh, to to take the benefit from the best part of uh, several CS security tools, making it easier to define a scan policy and to, to play it. And Patrol, I will talk about uh, Patrol a little bit. Uh, Patrol is composed in two independent type of application. The first one at the left is the, the manager, is the front end application. Um, where you de you have your your dashboard, you manage your your assets, you define your scans, you have your your findings, and and you try to to manage your the, the engines, which are the macro application that perform the, the, the scan. All this application is open source and developed in uh, way with Python. All features are, uh, are reachable through the the web UI or the uh, the REST API. The the patrol engines are the the probes. The, they are the micro application that perform the scans, pass, analyze, and format the findings into a unique and pivoting format. Uh, this could be deployed uh, on several uh, on, on separate uh, server. We can scale scale that way. Uh, for example, you can deploy. Uh, Probs on your on your internet on the, your internet network and probs on your uh, administration or uh, the DMZ, which are your rest networks. And it uh, could be the depending of your end point. And these password engines are um, so, sorry, uh, they they scan the the the, the assets. For example, we develop an engine for for Nmap. Uh, we should we we don't redevelop Nmap, but we we made a connector to Nmap, and that way we we can perform on the same assets security scans uh, using for using Nessus, Nmap, OpenVAS, Qualys, uh, and also say a security tool from the from the, the, the same cockpit and all the findings are the, the same look and we, we can compare and track all the, the findings on these the, assets issued by the, the, the several engines we, we, we use. A bit deeper. Task Manager, as I told, it's uh, the, the, the front end application. Is he, it's here you define your, your assets and a group of assets. You can also define the, the scans policy, you can schedule scans and manage the, the scan result. Patrol engines, it's the, the, the second component. The uh, patrol engines are the, the connectors with the, the, the scanner, which could uh, scan the, the, the assets, which could be on the internet or your internet network. Um, the, the path engines could uh, could be also linked to uh, a link to an, an external uh, sc scanning service or a link to your CTI uh, feeder. You can also create the tickets or uh, or inject uh, alert or raise alerts to your D DFIR system. You can also inject the data in your SIM or on your ALK if you want to to, to analyze or to, to make the alerts on a different way. As today, we develop a large range of uh, engines in various domains. For, uh, for each engine, we, we create a Docker image, including the tool, the tool needed and the REST API to deal with them. So you don't have to install tool, 
dependencies or manage the system requirements. It's just as simple as a Docker pool. Oh, it's it's uh, it's true, excepting from uh, several uh, from <laughs> several engines like uh, Nessus, OpenBus, or Nmap, which uh, the 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 Docker image the do, do not embed the, the the scanner, but it could be linked to your to your instance. On this slide, we, we see a lot of engines, uh, a lot of uh, of various um, various domains. The idea of patrol it's is a um, it's a framework. You can build your your tool to um, on the, the detection on the, the control you have to, to, to perform. I don't see many, many companies that use Patrol with all of these uh, engines. Uh, it's more, more or less uh, separated between the, the vulnerability assessment or uh, the, the, the data leaks or the, 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 the CI-CD uh, so static, uh, static code analysis or dynamic uh, code analysis. We also have a lot of ID for the net engines regarding vulnerability management, pasties, CTI, web web application scanners, the containers, data leaks, and and, and so on. So we it's a, the the, open, the the engines are also open source, and we we accept and uh, and contribute to any contribution to to create or to give us ID. To develop uh, any engine, please do. Maybe we'll start to talk about uh, use cases. The, the first one is uh, if we are. Oh, I come from the the, the red team. I come from a um, penetration tester, and the, the assessments are are uh, always the the, the same. Uh, we the, the first steps of the the. The, the pen test is to, to perform the, the recon activities. So we uh, we search for subdomains, we resolve IP, we we'll, uh, we try to to discover the the port, the, the, the open port. We fingerprint this uh, the, the the services. We search for vulnerabilities, and 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 so on. And for this, we use uh, several tools with uh, the same. More or less the, the same say, settings on the on the on your, your assets. So we with Patrol we 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 use Patrol with uh, our in our security assessment to uh, to do this as quick as possible and to do this to do this continuously. The second use case is. To to examine to the the source code and the, the running web applications to for security de defects is to 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 be involved in the the CI/CD pipeline. And so on each commit uh, we detect on the the code repository we are able to to clone the project and start a static code analysis using the what the dependency checks. Or uh, to retire JS for the JS dependencies, and the the code uh, is uh, stated, is built, and and so on. And once the the web application is deployed on the staging or environment or on the, the productions, we can also orchestrate autonomous uh, scan uh, using our uh, Zap, and uh, and it too. Um, Patrol is, uh, is available through the REST API, and we also developed uh, Patrol for Py clients, which is a Python li li library. So it's very easy to integrate with all those uh, security tools. The third one is about phishing preparation scenario. We we, we use it to, to search for early sign of malicious domains and uh, and where website presents the, the idea is to search for uh, suspicious do domains of the type of squatted domain. And we uh, once we, we identify them, we can monitor them uh, to, to look for, for changes. 
are they still parked? Uh, are they still parked? Where, where have they issued certificate? Uh, what is the, the web application uh, look like? Are they new exposed services and, and so on? And if we have any suspicious change on the, the, the attacker's uh, assets, we raise an alert and, uh, and we manage them. The third use case is code leaks on, on, on GitHub. Many, many, many times, uh, secure DevOps, uh, all IT people are leaking something on uh, on GitHub because uh, I don't know, it's easy, but uh, we, we don't really know how to, to use it. And we don't really know that uh, it's uh, for, for public repo, it's, uh, it's public. So we, we want to, to search for leaked internal resources code, for source code, sorry, uh, API keys, password, uh, scripts. And we, we developed a, a just a, a simple scrapper on, uh, on GitHub to, uh, to, to monitor our keywords and, uh, and uh, our, our patterns uh, to just to, to detect that we don't have leaked uh, any security uh, the system script or uh, API key keys or any sensitive uh, domain address. We we talk about uh, the use cases, but we we found that we could automate uh, well, when we automate all these security tools, we can address a lot of uh, of uh, of use cases. So I will talk about it. Just step, step back uh, a bit. Uh, if you orchestrate the, the, the security, security tools, you will perform more control and do it more often. It will result in more findings and it will result to more alerts. And uh, the security dashboard will look like a Christmas tree as very, very, very soon. So, well, the, all these events are, are, are relevant, so, but we have to, to prioritize the, the things. And it's, it's a, it's the, the key challenge uh, to today, but because we have the, the capacity to detect things, to uh, to um, to find out the the false positive, we have the technology and the, the experience, but we don't have the time to manage every every alert. So we have to prioritize. And if you commit, I uh, will share my morning routine. Uh, with uh, the, the, the CSR team I work in, when a new vulnerability is discovered. Every, every morning, we talk about this and we talk, uh, we, uh, we share questions. The first thing is when a new vulnerability is discovered, we, we talk about the CVSS best score. We, uh, we talk about uh, if we are vulnerable or not, are we exposed on the internet with this vulnerability? This, this vulnerability has been identified on a critical asset. Are we aware of uh, any functional exploit uh, with the vulnerability? Is there any patch or compensation measure available? Are there any likelihood catalyst? Uh, is this uh, vulnerability has been exploited in the world? What is the media hype level? Has been as the, the vulnerability has been exploding with relevant threat actors, and we ask for the, the CTI team. We also have the, the, the question: Have we already found? And the DFI the team is uh, is in charge to investigate and reassure us if uh, if we we can. And the, the next question is: Are we really able to detect? Uh, exploitation of this vulnerability. And at the end of the, the, the day, at the end of my morning, sorry, 
uh, the, the manager say, okay, uh, we have enough data to initiate a crisis and to, uh, to, to treat this in, a, in priority. It's definitely a teamwork. Uh, it's not just become uh, within the, the search of CCD, the FIR, the, the SOC, the, the CTI team. Uh, it's really a teamwork. Uh, all the IT and business service lines are involved. Um, the second thing is that uh, vulnerability metadata are not static. They are continuously evolving on, uh, over the time. Uh, everything changes when a new patch is available, when a new exploit is released, and when a new security resource blog uh, is, uh, is available. Uh, one event could, uh, could change uh, the, the, the way to, uh, to, to manage a security incident. And as, as you remember, we, we start using the, the CVSS BASCO. And we, talk, uh, we want to know today if the CVSS BASCO is sufficiently enough to, to be a primary factor of discrimination. Just a quick, 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 quick reminder of the CVSS scoring. CVSS scoring, there are three vectors, the best score, which will represent the intersect uh, fundamental characteristic of the vulnerability. We also have the temporal vector, uh, which represents the characteristic of the vulnerability that change over the time. And we have uh, another component about the environmental, which represents the characteristic of the vulnerability within the, the client context. CVSS is the norm is the standard very adopt. But the CVSS BASCO uh, is yes, it's usually provided, but the temporal and uh, the, the environmental scores are on our behalf. We, we have clues, we have uh, information for, from many, many parts, which are not uh, uh, on the same, uh, to, to, always on the, the same page. And um, it's just a, a score, it's a, a, a bad score. And um, for example, we have, well, as fun fact, Herbleed was scored at five and Spectre was scored at uh, minus five. So it, we just have the, the, the CVSS bad score as a primary uh, discriminator. It's we don't see if it's uh, it's fits very sufficiently enough to, uh, to 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 do our jobs. So just go 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 deeper with it. We found that uh, we have to to manage multiple criteria for prioritization. And we have to manage the, the CVSS BAS score and about the, the patch availability, the age of the vulnerability. We have to, to manage the discovery is and the detection is. All of these data are available from various uh, sites or feeds of uh, information. So, but all of these are publicly and quite in quite good quality. All the criteria of prioritization is all about the threats, about the temporal metrics. Uh, it's about the exploit and availability, exploit maturity, and the ease of exploitations. Uh, also, the, the threat and the intensity is very, very useful to, to know uh, because it's, it's um, a sign of uh, the, the, the maturity and the uh, and the likelihood of uh, of occurrence on the, uh, of the, 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 the risk. We thought about we also we, with the MITRE attack it uh, and the the CTI feeds uh, information. It could be useful to uh, to to know about the, the threat re re relevancy. Sorry, it's very hard to, to say that on French. Remember, and it's. Exploded by uh, monitor threat actors or, or not. And the, the third pillar, it's about the assets in itself, the uh, vulnerable assets. 
uh, is the asset it's is uh, is critical or not? What is the the exposure of the asset? Are we vulnerable from uh, an, an asset exposed on from the internet or a restricted network? And what about the distribution of the the, the vulnerability? Uh, if we have a vulnerability with a with a high CVSS without uh, without a functional exploit on the network restricted network, it's it's um, it's not very high, uh, the, the 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 real priority. But a vulnerability with a standard and middle say um, CVSS Bascore, but exposed on the internet with, a, uh, with an exploit available and a large distribution, it's the, the top one priority. So we, we take all these criteria for prioritization and we have to make decisions to, to, do, to, to check uh, if we have to, to manage this as quick as possible or not. The, the first thing is Okay, it's very uh, it's very urgent. We have to to ask for an immediate uh, correction, and we uh, we start a crisis. Uh, we we open the, the crisis room. The second, it's okay. It's uh, it's urgent. We we ask for an immediate correction, and we we uh, we assess that the, the correction is uh, is efficient. The third. So the third action is okay. It's a vulnerability. We we know about this. Apply the fix, and in the the next patching campaign, but uh, but no more. And finally, if the the vulnerability match no 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 top criteria, okay. Apply a fix if possible, but we we don't have any attention of, of this. We we have to choose our battle, but um, the type of uh, vulnerability we don't uh, we don't manage this. For for that for that we we are working on the new tool, which is battle here. Um, the, the, the open sourcing of uh, the, the releasing open source is, this uh, this application is, uh, is currently is uh, in discussion. I hope it will be the case. Um, the idea of uh, Patrol here is the to manage all these criteria, all these metrics, and we we use we massively use the CV search and uh, the app for CVE tools, which are uh, open source tools released by the Circle. Um, the, the idea is to grab uh, some, uh, to gr collect and clean data like CVE, uh, CPE, cross references to create uh, an update vulnerability metadata from this, uh, from the, the NVD, the exploit DB, uh, packet store, metasploit, Talos, uh, the enable DB, uh, and so on, and to, to compute a vulnerability prioritization rating using the, the, the vulnerability metadata and the asset criticality and exposure and this uh, the, this uh, this vector are known by password asset because by, by password manager sorry because in password manager we know that uh, we we found a vulnerability on the, the asset exposed on the the internet on on the internet network and uh, we know about the the, uh, the the distribution too, and the the idea is to to provide password manager a rating from the uh, on the, the the vulnerability found using any any scanner uh, as well. We can also use password here to to track changing on uh, changes sorry uh, on vulnerability like CVSS uh, exploit known and and so on, and to uh, to perform alerting. Uh, like uh, if we found that uh, uh, if we found a uh, vulnerability on the monitored product or uh, or product versions, okay, we send automatically an email uh, 
we send an uh, a the hive event we send a slide we open a, a Jira ticket and, and so on um, and finally uh, it, the, the idea is also to, to share feeds with uh, using Patrol and, uh, and CTI. So we will talk about this later. I reached the, the end of the, the presentation. So if we can just to have to step back and talk about all uh, automating, let's say your 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 setups. It's quite possible. Uh, the idea is to have a cost-effective um, uh, activities. Uh, we um, we serve to rationalize the tool integration, the product licenses, and all the skins uh, needed to, uh, to deploy and use uh, the, the various security scanners. We uh, we we have to. Uh, the second one is to to provide. Turnkey solutions. Uh, every component is available through document images. It's very easy to use and they deploy. It. We provide templates for uh, for scan policy and so on. The third one is uh, Patrol, and all of the the tool galaxy is open source and easily customizable to your specific needs. And uh, we is we have documentation. We also have to improve this documentation, but everything is available. Uh, globally, it's a full stack on uh, continuous assessment. The idea is to have to uh, a 360 degree overview on your assets uh, to, to perform a real time with re relevant assessment with relevant data to keep you updated from every source where, where we can. Uh, finally, it's made by Wizla with uh, by by Express. Sorry, uh, we we and uh, all the uh, the community, the patrol community is uh, is is composed by a security expert. And finally, if we, we can summarize with, with two things for, for, for big company is uh, is quite an opportunity to aggregate findings from different existing tools you already have in place and for newcomers and small organizations it can bring you uh, capacities to quickly improve your your security maintenance. so what, what what next we have a roadmap, of course. We uh, we we are working hard to uh, to improve the, to to improve our integration with uh, with all the tools, um, and especially two tools: uh, the Hive, which is a security incident response, and Radar, uh, which is an IT op uh, automation and uh, security compliance tools. Uh, all, all of them are uh, open source. Uh, project, very, very mature project. And uh, we, we definitely want to, uh, to have more integration with, with this. Uh, we also try to, to improve the, the Python 4 P, for Py, sorry, it's uh, the Python client API. We are in, uh, currently uh, rede redesigning the, uh, the, the front end, the front end of the, the, the Python manager. We are also testing uh, endlessly new use cases in the debugging, improving quality and the security, global security of the, the, the platform. And we also are building an enterprise solution. So, but it's an open source subject, uh, project, and it will be always the, the case. Contribution is really, really needed. So if you have the ability to, to test it and give us feedbacks, uh, it would be very, very great for, for, for us. Uh, if you want to contribute and to, uh, or to just to, to push new, new issues, issues, we, uh, we will be very, very happy to, to, uh, to have this. So we are at the end of the, the, the presentation. So if you have any any question, please uh, the, please uh, do it in the, the chat room. And finally, 
uh, I know it's very, very lot late to to say that, so, but I really want to to thank the the DevCon organization. Thank you for having accepting my my talk, and thank you for you guys and and girls to to have attended the, the this session. Thank you, thank you very much, and and go go for questions. Thank you.